Amazon, the nation's second largest employer, has been buying up companies as of late, lots and lots of companies, uh, at a very disturbing rate. Uh, recently, the company uh, has jumped into healthcare by purchasing One Medical for about $3.9 billion and also acquired iRobot, a company that makes the Roomba vacuums for about $1.7 billion. So now this is obviously a concern for people who are against monopolies, <laughs> uh, importantly, uh, but also privacy advocates. Uh, and with me here, of course, to talk about the implications of some of these mergers is Ron Flacone has been doing uh, a lot of good work with the antitrust pro-privacy group Fight for the Future. Uh, Ron, I want you to tell the audience uh, about the what the big issue here First, with the iRobot merger, I want you to explain what exactly is uh, the problem here. Yeah, well, we'll start with iRobot because I'll, I'll tell you, I actually think the one medical one is even more frightening. And uh, we'll get to that second. But we'll start with iRobot. Um, first of all, so iRobot, they make the cameras that go into Roombas. Right. So you look at what Amazon does. Amazon harvests your data. Uh, and then they use that to basically sell you products. And what types of products are they going to try to sell you? Well, all of their generic knockoff products. And that's sure. how they, you know, one of the many ways they make money. They're also responsible for over half of all online commerce. Mm -hmm. So now Amazon is going to be able to monitor what's going on in your house. They're going to be able to see your floor plans. They're going to be able to see uh, your habits, your buying habits, your appliance habits, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, and they're also going to use this to kind of corner that market for themselves the same way they did when they acquired ring, they acquired ring in 2018, they drove all the other door cams out of business. And then what else, you know, what did they do? Well, they started giving that information to law enforcement. So basically now everyone who has a ring camera, you're putting your own neighborhood under constant surveillance and, uh, the police of the United States have used that for such altruistic things like finding information on an ex-girlfriend and stuff like that. So, so it's, oh. it's, it's not a good thing at all. It's so, a huge concern for privacy advocates. So, so you're saying it's not like a neighborhood watch, but more like, no. I don't know, maybe helping ice hunt down immigrants to get rid of. Well, yeah, not only that, but it's like, I mean, we can tie in facial recognition software to all of this. Sure. Not only is it helping out horrible institutions like ICE, but a lot of times because of mismatches, they're not even getting the person they think that they're getting. I mean, they have there's literally been situations where people have been sent to countries they've never even been to because they were mismatched with someone else on this incredibly faulty, destructive software. Um, so yeah, this is not a good thing. These types of things, you know, and especially when you're sticking to iRobot, I mean, this is just someone's home, but this type of surveillance, it does not help the good guys catch the bad guys, quote unquote. There's no evidence of that ever, ever, ever happening. Uh, instead it's used for very brutal means, very deceptive means. Um, and it's just an overreach that's not making society better in any way whatsoever. This is just another, for instance of that. These right. iRobot cameras, this isn't going to make your, you know, this isn't going to make your Roomba more effective or anything like that. This is just going to make Amazon having more of your data for them to just sell you more junk. Yeah, the thing that I can think of that kind of, uh, I guess my brain went to this is the spying on Muslims uh, in New York okay. City after 9-11. Mm -hmm. So, look, the, you know, the New York uh, Police Department, they decided to uh, spy in on Muslims. Well, all they had to do apparently was just give them a Roomba. <laughs> mm, and yeah, then they, yeah. they, they would have been able to, you know, not have to have agents to go around and, and pretend. Now, again, this was back in like what, 2004. So they didn't have right. like all this stuff, but you could just apply that today. Uh, and, uh, you know, any, any group that the, you know, potentially you would want law enforcement to spy in on, just order them a bunch of Roombas or, or some yeah. Echoes. And there you go. You can spy in on all of them uh, without actually having to, you know, commit any, uh, uh, you know, agents or whatever to that cause. It, 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 is, it is fairly disturbing when you think about 
how law enforcement now has access to all of that data. And that is a very uncomfortable merging of government, you know, state uh, law enforcement and corporations. There's a word for that, too, by the way. Mm, there is. Uh, there's a word for that. It starts with a fast, ends with an ism. So, mm. uh, you know, we, we even have a word for that. And yeah, I mean, as of recent, to, to give another update on this, there is a letter that Fight for the Future in conjunction with, I think, of over 30 other organizations ranging from digital rights organizations to labor organizations. The Teamsters are among them. Demand Progress is among them. Um, they're sending a letter to the FTC uh, to demand that they do something about this and to say, look, this is way this is an overreach. This merger shouldn't happen. I mean, sometimes people forget we do have an FTC that's supposed to be on top of all this stuff. Yet for some reason, when HBO and Discovery want to merge, no problem. Any merger time Warner wants, no problem. They seem to always be asleep at the wheel here. Mm, I, I don't think that's a coincidence. I, I think that <laughs> might have something to do with all the money uh, that, yeah. you know, <laughs> these uh, these corporations happen to spend in in lobbying. Oh, like, are you am I am I actually uh, accusing the government of corruption? Yes, yes. I think you're on to something. Yeah, I might I'm I might be. It's it's very very possible. Yeah, happening. Uh, in fact, look, why don't we go to uh the even more uh as you mentioned, scary merger. Yeah. Uh, and that's with One Health. As I mentioned, one medical, or I'm sorry, yeah. One Medical uh where they purchased it for again, nearly 4 billion dollars. So that is a huge purchase. And look, when you're going to drop that amount of money, you're going to expect a pretty good return on investment. Uh, what exactly would they be uh, getting back for such an investment, Ron? What do you, what do you think? Here's, here's what I think they're trying to do. And this is just based on, you know, observing the way it works. So healthcare, I mean, we already have the most predatory healthcare system pretty much in the industrial, well, definitely in the industrialized world. And it's a for-profit system, obviously. Mm -hmm. We all know this. So Jeff Bezos is getting involved with that now. Well, why would he do that? Doesn't he have his hand in enough pies? Well, here's why. What did Jeff Bezos do with Amazon in the first place? Well, thanks to a lot of money from his parents and their rich friends, he was able to operate this business that was an online brick and mortar book, book retailer or whatever. They sold books online. They didn't make much money because a lot of people were not buying books online at that time. And books are only so popular of an item. But that wasn't his plan, was it? What his no. plan was to do was to eventually just kind of dominate the online commerce market, which he did. Um, I think he's trying to do the same thing in healthcare. He's going to operate this company at a loss for as long as he has to. And he can do it for as long as he wants because he has unlimited cash. He can operate this thing at a loss for as long as he needs to. And then eventually he's going to dominate healthcare and he's going to have a near monopoly on healthcare, which imagine... I mean, our system is already among the worst and it is the worst in the industrialized world. It's among the worst in the world, period, uh, because of predatory for profit, uh, corrupt behavior. Mm -hmm. Imagine Jeff Bezos having a monopoly on top of all that. This is the guy that his warehouse conditions are so bad. Three people died in July. There were three deaths in July in warehouses in um, New Jersey. They're investigating that now. And a, again, a bunch of labor organizations and digital rights organizations are calling on um, Congress to have um, the CEO of Amazon testify to the labor board. Mm -hmm. um, he also has no problem having his uh, employees who do delivery routes, you know, urinate in bottles so that they can make their routes. Um, this is a very. This is a psychopath. I mean, I'm sorry. Like, there's no way you acquire that amount of wealth and you continue to be that wealth hungry uh, unless you are a true sociopath, um, devoid of anything resembling empathy. And that's the type of person who is going to try to monopolize our healthcare system. What and would be the benefit, though? I, I'm I'm just kind of curious. Like, what would what what would be the benefit of of getting into and and having so much you know, uh, I, I guess so much of a stake in healthcare systems in this country. Uh, again, because it's, we it's all need strange. healthcare, man. I mean, I mean, he will make an obscene amount of money if if we have this healthcare quote unquote system where anything goes already and you can price gouge as much as you want. If you monopolize that, 
man, you're going to be making money hand over fist because people need to go to the doctor. So, I mean, it's like you think the prices are bad now. They they could get way, way worse. I think I what's mean, um, I, th I think what's uh, even more, I think, disturbing about the entire conversation uh, over, you know, one company having. Again, what they're going to do is they've already acquired uh, a mail order pharmacy uh, mm -hmm. and then also are building out a Amazon Care, which is virtual cons uh, consultations and at home visits from doctors. Right. Yeah. The, the, the whole thing that's disturbing is the fact that we have a system already that that may make this seem to be more of an attractive option than what we already have. I mean, think sure. about it. What what Amazon has done for the market, for example, in or the workplaces in in everything else that they've done, which is to basically uh, make cheap knockoffs of everything, right? right? In order to make more money. Well, apply that to healthcare, and not only that, but mistreating employees, right? So right. now you're going to have what uh, employees, you know, people that are supposed to be healthcare professionals that are getting mistreated, what are they going to do? Like, uh, are they going to have to be peeing in bottles as well uh, while they're sure. giving, you know, all this uh, different health uh, or health screenings or whatever online? I mean, the horrors can only be, you know, imagined uh, of exactly. what, what this is going to lead to. Exactly. And, and I think you're kind of painting the picture pretty accurately to like what will likely unfold. Yeah. Like in the short term, people might think, well, gee, uh, I mean, again, our healthcare lower system, cost, like probably, these are right? these are some of the right lower costs. I mean, I think memberships started about two hundred bucks a year. They do for a lot of people that that's less than what they're paying for healthcare. So this might look appealing, um, and this might look like, oh, okay, this is better. And keep in mind, it's not like these other companies are are good. I mean, the, right. the health insurance companies are some of the most repulsive companies in the freaking world. Right. Um, you're just taking something really bad. And making it even worse, which is hard to even fathom. But like, if there's one way our ridiculous healthcare system could get even worse, it would be letting someone like Jeff Bezos monopolize it. And that's the wheels have started to turn for that to happen. Right. And, and, again, and that would be, I mean, you would just have, I mean, eventually you would just have an entire nation of people where everything is just unattainable for, for basic healthcare. Right. And, and again, for, for millions of people, it already is. Uh, and, it already is. Right. And, and again, and, and they're kind of selling this uh, whole thing, this whole idea, or they're going to start selling it as, a, again, convenience, right? Oh, well, you could just do this online and, and, and it's much more convenient. Look at that. And, and there's going to be, you know, lower prices. It kind of reminds me, and, and I forget who started this um, company. It's, a you know, a Mark Cuban, I think, a, a big investor decides that he was going to get into uh, pharmaceuticals, interestingly enough. And, and so far, you know, the company that he was, uh, that, that he's doing the pharmaceuticals from, is so far offering lower prices on prescription drugs. Um, but there's a problem with that. Again, with the, you know, uh, cornering of the market and, and things like that, or getting access and patent to uh, access to certain drugs um, that maybe they eventually might, only be the ones be able to uh, that that will offer uh, said drugs or at least at at a, at a better price. I mean, you're going to have some uh, huge issues with that, uh, with that market control, and it's just generally not a good thing when you have these big corporations that are unaccountable. And I think that's the big issue with me is that they're unaccountable to the public, right? Um, being in control of these of these vital health services and being, you know, if it gets to the point of monopolization of said services, even, even worse. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's what is so ridiculous concerning about this. Murder. Right. Because it's like, again, it's not like we're just, it's not like we're just kind of hypothesizing or guessing we're basing this off of past behavior, very deliberate past behavior. This is what this company does. This is their business model. This is what has gotten them to the point it's gotten them to. So why hmm. would they do anything different in healthcare? Yeah, and 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 again, it, it's not just you know Amazon. Amazon has been allowed to do this, but every company that was able to do this 
has actually done this. <laughs> right. Uh, this is why we originally were supposed to have antitrust legislation in the first place. But there is right. no one there that is actually using that legislation to break up these giant companies or to prevent these companies from getting so large and so powerful in the first place. And I think that's where the uh, other real problem uh, or or just what this entire problem has started from has begun it is, is they haven't done their jobs to make sure that there is a healthy and robust competition. It, yeah, I mean, so the little bit of good news here, Jeff, is, is there some policy in Congress right now? Uh, you know, I've been pushing it really hard. I've talked about it on your show before, but, mm -hmm. but now's the perfect time to reiterate it. Uh, there is some antitrust legislation that starts breaking up big tech. It starts breaking up some of the uh, predatory practices Amazon's able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to completely get us out of the woods, but we got to start somewhere and we got to start breaking these things up. So please, I implore everybody watching, everybody listening, go to antitrustsummer.com, sign this petition. The bills are out there. Chuck Schumer has said he's going to give it a vote this fall. But guess what? Chuck Schumer's daughter is a lobbyist for Amazon and his other daughter works for Meta, which is Facebook. So he has some conflict of interest floating around there. That's so cute. we have to be so loud they can't ignore us. So please go to antitrustsummer.com. Demand the vote this fall. We were supposed to have it in June. They've been dragging their feet. They're just going to wait out the clock unless we scream so loud that they can't mm. ignore us. So please, 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 antitrustsummer.com. This is the strongest antitrust legislation that we have seen in the United States in 40 years. So that, that's pretty significant antitrust legislation. Right. It will certainly cause a big dent. So please, antitrustsummer.com.